The biggest mistake students make on the digital SAT is treating it like a math test in school. It's not. It's a logic game designed to trick you. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to outsmart it. Look, we all know the feeling. Your heart pounds, the timer on the screen feels like it's mocking you, and you're staring at a math problem that looks like it's written in a different language. You have the formulas memorized, you've done the practice, but something isn't clicking. Here's the secret. The SAT isn't just testing your ability to solve for X. It's testing your ability to reason under pressure. A school test wants to know if you learned the material. The SAT wants to know if you can spot the shortcut, avoid the trap, and manage your time effectively when the pressure is on. You need to master three core pillars of the mental game. First, master the clock, master the module. Second, think in graphs using the Desmos mindset. And third, expose the traps. Let's break down how to use each of these to your advantage. First up, master the clock, master the module. The digital SAT is an adaptive test. This means your performance on the first math module determines whether you get an easier or a harder second module. Getting to that harder module is crucial if you're aiming for a top score. So how do you do that? You don't just race through, you play it smart. Your goal in module one isn't speed, it's accuracy. This is where you need to invest your time to lock in as many correct answers as possible. Here's the strategy, the two-pass approach. On your first pass through the module, you only answer the questions you immediately know how to solve. If you read a question and have to think for more than 15 seconds about your first step, you flag it using the mark for review button and move on. Don't get bogged down. This does two things. First, you build momentum and confidence by banking all the easy points. Second, you ensure you see every single question in the module. After your first pass, you circle back to the flagged questions with the remaining time. Now you can tackle the tougher puzzles without the stress of the clock running out on questions you haven't even seen. Next, think in graphs or the Desmos mindset. The single greatest tool you have on the digital SAT is the built-in Desmos graphing calculator. If you're only using it for basic arithmetic, you're leaving a massive number of points on the table. Your new mindset should be this. Anytime you see an equation with variables, your first thought should be, can I graph this? Let's say a question asks for the solution to a system of equations, y equals 3x minus 5 and y equals negative x plus 7. In school, you'd use substitution or elimination. On the SAT, that's the slow way. The smart way? You just open Desmos, type in both equations. You're looking for the point where they intersect. You click the point, boom. The answer is x equals 3, y equals 4. No algebra, no chance of a sign error. Just a graph and a click. This works for finding x-intercepts, vertexes of parabolas, and so much more. Treat Desmos as your visual problem-solving partner, not just a number cruncher. And that brings us to our third and most crucial pillar, expose the traps. You need to understand something fundamental. The people who write the SAT are experts at predicting your mistakes. The wrong answer choices on a question are not random. They are specifically designed to catch students who make common errors. They are traps. Let's look at this classic example. A question about the area of a circle gives you the diameter. Your brain is trained to hear area of a circle and think pi r squared. You see the number 12. So, what's the most common mistake? Forgetting that the radius is half the diameter. The trap is to just plug 12 into the formula. 12 squared is 144. And what do you know? One of the choices will be 144 pi. That's the bait. The correct way is to first find the radius. Diameter is 12, so the radius is 6. The area is pi times 6 squared, which is 36 pi. Here's the mental strategy. Before you even start solving, look at the answer choices. When you see both 36 pi and 144 pi, a little alarm should go off in your head. That signals a potential radius versus diameter trap. By anticipating the trap before you solve, you arm yourself against it. You're no longer the victim, you're the detective. Okay, now let's get into some rapid fire tips specifically for the digital format. First, practice on the platform. Doing practice problems on paper is good, but it's not enough. You need to get used to the feel of the Bluebook app. How does the timer feel in your peripheral vision? 
How quick is it to flag a question? Where are the buttons? Familiarity with the interface reduces cognitive load on test day, freeing up brain power for the actual math. Second, use the built-in tools strategically. We've talked about Mark for Review and Desmos. Don't forget, you can also eliminate answer choices by clicking on them. This is incredibly helpful for narrowing down your options on tough questions, and use the annotator tool to highlight key phrases or numbers in word problems to keep yourself focused. Finally, let's talk about the psychological trap of the too easy question. Especially at the beginning of a module, you will get some questions that seem incredibly simple. Your brain, wired to expect tricks, might start to overthink. Can it really be that easy? What am I missing? Stop. Sometimes a question is easy because it's an easy question. The SAT needs to have a range of difficulties. Trust your knowledge. If the answer seems straightforward, it probably is. Answer it confidently and move on. Wasting two minutes doubting yourself on an easy question is just as bad as spending two minutes stuck on a hard one. So, what's the takeaway here? The digital SAT math section is a beatable game, but you can't win it just by memorizing more formulas. You win by mastering the mental game. You win by treating it like a puzzle, not an obstacle.